Hi, and thanks for tuning in to a special double episode of Sight Unseen Insider. A lot to talk about tonight and stuff, and I encourage you to stick around till the end because I'm going to promise you that tonight I'm bringing the pain and delivering the goods, and you, trust me, you are going to want to stick around until I wrap this one up, okay? Uh, you saw the title for tonight's episode, we're talking theft, both physical property theft and intellectual property theft. And the person who's responsible for both is American Horrors President Hart Fisher. Let me take you back a couple of years. We shot a trailer for my film, The Bunker, okay? We cut this thing to music by a band named The Crew Shadows, one of my favorite bands, and a group that I had gone to see a couple of times and spoken to the lead singer, Rogue, about using their music for this trailer and possibly in the movie. Rogue loved the idea. He gave me the contact information for the band's label, for the band's, pre you know, the president of the label. He says, get in touch with Patrick. Let's make this happen. So I tried over and over and over again. We had the trailer up on a hidden private YouTube page. You couldn't access it without the password. I sent that to Patrick. I called him, I left messages, nothing. So I wrote a blog, and I told Hart Fisher I was going to post it the following day on VampireFreaks.com, big goth community where the crew shadows are very popular, and I figured I could get people to put pressure on the label to actually get back to me. Hart thought that was dumb. In fact, what he suggested to me was just put up the trailer on YouTube, you know, let the chips fall where they may, and force the band and the record label's lawyers to make me take it down. Right? I couldn't see any reason behind doing that. This is a band I liked. Why would I force them to eat the legal fees on, on making me take something down? It made no sense, but Hart emailed me and said, Oh, well, that's how I do it. Rage Against the Machine and System of a Down? Pretty popular bands. Hart ripped them off. He says, Joe, this is how I do it. Creator's rights. Hart Fisher loves to beat his chest about, oh, don't let anybody violate your creator's rights. Protect your creator's rights at all costs. Well, folks, as you can see, Hart Fisher doesn't give a shit about creator's rights. At least, not when he can violate them, and not when it benefits him. I decided I wasn't going to do that. Let's fast forward. Hart and I are having a falling out over the bunker. He doesn't like the decisions I'm making, even though it's getting us into film festivals and I'm getting you know, offers from distributors. Our friendship is ending on this film. Hart Fisher walks away from the movie. He quits on me several months before he goes publicly online and makes that announcement. But at the time that he did, I was asking for my hard drives back. I had sent him two Western Digital Elements hard drives, big ones, 360 gigabyte mothers. These things were pricey. At the time, they were the most expensive drives I could get my hands on, and they were the biggest available. The receipts you're seeing on the screen right now are from my FedEx shipments to Hart Fisher. So when Hart quits the movie, I've already demanded my hard drives back about a dozen times. The first lawyer that I retained demanded my hard drives back. Hart didn't respond. My most recent lawyer made the same requests. We expect Joe's hard drives back. She's been ignored, and Hart's been dodging our C&Ds ever since. And I know it's easy for people to say, I mean, what if Hart sent them back and he sent them UPS or whatever? I bought a copy of this off eBay for about three bucks. This is Hart Fisher's film, The Garbage Man, his debut feature, okay? Cost me about three bucks, and here's my review. Hart, you forgot to put a comma after the word garbage. The importance of this film is what you're about to see on screen. Know who that is? That's Saskia Gonzalez. That's my lead actress. That's a scene from The Bunker. That's a scene from Principal Photography, which Hart was never involved with. You know why it's on his disc? Because Hart stole my hard drives 
and he stole my movie footage and he still got them and he won't give them back. Now, I'm certain hearts hardcore fans, including the one who has threatened to American history X me, you know, for really beating him up publicly over this, might think, well, it's just a glitch, you know, Hart had worked on the film for a while, right? It's possible. And I grant you that. Except, Hart and I aren't friends. No surprise. Hart and I aren't friends on Facebook. However, we do have mutual friends on Facebook, a lot of them. Several of them think Hart's an asshole. I tend to agree. And one of them sent me what you're seeing on your screen right now. Hart Fisher talking about releasing the bunker. Suggesting that I was trying to goad him into it to become relevant again. Now remember, at the time, Hart has been telling people on this radio show that he does with his clown Josh Hadley that my distributors have dropped me, they've walked away from me, that his legal threats have worked. He's trumpeting all this stuff that, as you saw last week if you tuned in, was all bullshit. So, the idea that Hart wanted to threaten to release my film, well, what does that say to you? He's got my footage, and he has the opportunity to pirate it. Hart, even your mother can't deny that that's my actress, and that's my footage from my feature, which you quit publicly. You told the whole world. You made a big deal about it. Oh, I'm walking away from the bunker, and I'm walking away from Joe Monks, and this change is permanent. All that stuff. You told the whole world that you had nothing to do with me, and you had nothing to do with the film. And one year later, what happens? My footage shows up on your DVD. It's pretty amusing, huh? I found it amusing. You know, I bust Josh Hadley's balls online uh, because, A, you huckstered him into you know, libeling me on my own YouTube channel. And I'll tell you, me and my distributors got a real laugh out of that one. You know who got a bigger laugh? My attorney. But Josh, he's small potatoes. In fact, I really don't mind Josh that much because he's the one who's stuck with you now. But you know who I do think would like to know about something like this? Alki David. Yeah, your boss at Filmon.com. Oh yeah, I read that open letter to the entertainment industry and stuff where Alki David was talking about, you know, oh, how unfair it is and you know how he's being, you know, shut out from, you know, broadcasting the majors, the major network channels. You know what I remember him saying in there? I'll paraphrase. He said something about Filmon.com pays millions of dollars per year to content providers for the material they broadcast. Millions of dollars to license content. You know what else I remember him saying? That he had sued CBS for piracy. He doesn't seem to take kindly to the idea of piracy and the idea of not paying licensing fees and you know releasing material that you don't have the rights to. My attorney and I both believe that Alki David would love to know that the person programming the American Horrors Channel not only ripped off my physical property, but has ripped off my intellectual property. Now, you probably saw the title of today's episode too, Hart. It says part one, because I intend to put up part two next week. Because folks, I don't care how diehard a Hart Fisher fan you are, if this doesn't turn your stomach, wait till next week, because this isn't the only place that my footage is turned up where it's not supposed to. And I plan to expose that next week, too. Hart, I'm not going to shut up. I can prove you're a thief. I can prove you ripped off not just me, but System of a Down, Rage Against the Machine, all the bands that you told me, oh, you don't need a licensing agreement from PBK or Plastic Bastard or Tattooed Billionaires. Don't worry about it. Just use the music. I'll take care of it. That's not me. In fact, when I quoted you from that program you do with Josh Hadley, I used a voice actor. I could have easily just snipped the clip of the audio, but I didn't. 
I used somebody to quote you when you were talking the bullshit you spoke about me. Well, tell you what, I'm going to make you an offer because you know I don't do threats. I just did this video. I didn't let you try to stop it beforehand. But here's my offer. I'm going to send you an email tonight to your American Horrors address and your personal email address. And your choice is send me back my drives and my intellectual property and walk away from this and in return I'll take this video down. You know that's not the kind of thing I would ever do. You and I used to be friends. No longer. But I will give you this chance. Because the drives are worthless. And you and I both know it. They're several years old. Now can, I can get a terabyte drive for 90 bucks. Doesn't matter. But I want my drives back. And I want the footage that you're holding hostage back. Because now, Hart, you can't take this back. You can't fix this. It's too late. The whole world knows now that my stolen footage is on your feature film. And I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm going to talk to everybody I have to. I'm going to email everybody I have to. I'm going to have my lawyer notify everybody they have to to make sure that you aren't going to continue to make threats like you did on Facebook. How about that? Is that fair? And finally, let me wrap it up with this. Hart, remember sending me an email where you told me that Waka was the best set of eyes you had? That she was the best QC person you'd work with? For those not in the know, QC is just shorthand for quality control. Well, I got a question. Who did the quality control on the garbage man? Who missed this? Because I know what a final cut timeline looks like. And it's really tough to miss a clip sandwiched before another fresh clip and not notice that it's there. So, let me know, Hart. Did you do your own QC on the garbage man? Because this is a film you worked on for 17 years. You once told me it's the most important film you'd ever do, your first feature. Or did Aunt Waka do it? Who blew it? Who screwed up and let that get by them? Next week, part two. Hart, I'm going to give you 72 hours to respond to me or to respond to my lawyer because I know you have her info because you got hit with one CMB. Dodging the other two doesn't change that. And if not, you've got my email address. It's right there on my website. For everybody else, thanks for tuning in. And I promise, more fun next Friday.